I am on a little adventure in the Swiss Alps. And when I'm in the mountains, I'm always on the lookout for beautiful folds in the mountains around me. And a fold is when a layered rock is bent into a wave-like pattern. And if you look behind me, you see a very beautiful fold in the Dent du Midi. Now you may ask yourself, how do folds form in rocks? Because on Earth's surface, rocks are pretty rigid and unbendable. And if I pick up a rock over here, and even if I were strong enough, I would probably break this rock and not bend it. So in this video, we're going to find out how rocks can bend in beautiful folds like that. Are you ready to explore? Before we move on, I'd like to show you some other examples of folds that I spotted during my trip. As you can see, sometimes the folds can get very complicated. Here are some other great smaller examples of rocks that have been bent in a fold. And you have to imagine that they first started off horizontally layered like this. So when we change the shape of a rock from horizontally layered to a nice fold, for example, we call this deformation. And in geology, there are two main ways to deform a rock. We can either break it or we can bend it into a fault. If we break it, we form a fault. And when a fault forms, you can clearly see that the layers are offset. We call this brittle deformation. But if we bend it, the rock bends like it's some kind of soft material. And then we create a nice fault. And this we call ductile deformation. Now, it's pretty obvious in order to break or to bend the rock, we need to apply some sort of force to the rock. And in geology, we call that force stress. So if you want to deform a rock, you want to put it under stress. So we can apply different types of stress to deform a rock. But the type of stress that has been very important here in the Alps is compressional stress. And compressional stress occurs when some things are pushed together. For example, look at this book. I can compress the book together with my hands and you can see that already a nice fold forms. So in the case of compressional stress, the stresses acting in that direction are much greater than the stresses acting in this way and in this way. And the reason why we have so many folds in the Alps is because this area experienced a tremendous amount of compressional stress. Because over here, two tectonic plates collided together. The European plate and the African plate collided together. And as that happened, they generated a tremendous amount of stress, deforming, pushing and squeezing the rocks of both tectonic plates together, pushing them up in this wonderful mountain range. Now there are multiple factors that determine whether a rock would break or whether it would bend in a fold. And two very important factors are temperature and pressure. When temperatures and pressures are low, like here on Earth's surface, rocks tend to break. But when you move deeper in Earth's crust, the pressure and the temperature start to increase. And at higher pressure and temperatures, rocks tend to deform in a ductile manner. So they tend to form folds. Now the easiest way to visualize this is to see how temperature affects a chocolate bar. When a chocolate bar just comes out of the fridge, you can break off a little piece. But when you have been hiking with a chocolate bar all day and it's pretty warm outside, the chocolate bar tend to deform in a ductile way. So now with my chocolate bar, I can actually form a fold and it doesn't break anymore. It's important to remember that the folds that I've shown you today weren't formed on Earth's surface. No, they were probably buried at a few kilometers depth where the pressure and temperatures were higher and where these rocks then responded in a ductile manner to the tectonic forces that were applied to them. The reason why they're now at Earth's surface is because the top layers have been eroded off and that's why they are now exposed. So it's also important to understand that all these folds didn't form within one night. 
the tectonic forces were applied very, very slowly over millions of years. And when stresses are applied slowly to rocks, they are more likely to respond in a ductile way. Now, I hope you enjoyed learning more about faults in mountains. So next time you're in the mountains, keep your eyes open for some faults. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>